Hey guys, how's it going? This is another video where I somehow managed to save another presumably dead piece of old tech with next to no skill. I hope you enjoy it. This video started with a retro build in which I wanted to build a simple retro PC and perhaps test a bunch of old PC parts I had lying around. The parts of this build were a socket AM2 motherboard that I later found out was a Zotec board with an N430 NVIDIA chipset. A Sampron 1250 LE processor. The Sampron processors were always geared to the lower budget part of the market. And this one is no different with one core and a 2.2 GHz frequency. A couple of 1 GB DDR2 memory sticks from Kingston. A 500GB Seagate hard disk that I knew had some kind of OS installed as I used these parts a few years ago. A Corsair VX450 PSU. And this was the base system and really all I needed to get started. If this build had gone flawlessly, it would have taken me about 20 minutes to finish and then I could go on to test the other parts video cards from NVIDIA and ATI, networking cards and some sound cards. Perhaps I could even play some games. Oh no, but this was not what the universe had in store for me. No matter what I did, I couldn't get the system to post. I tried clearing the CMOS settings, different memory sticks, removing and sitting the processor in a couple of times, different video cards, because I thought maybe it would post in something other than the onboard video. I tried switching the PSU and I even took the CPU socket cover off and looked at the pins myself to make sure the processor was sitting properly on them. At the end of the night, I couldn't get the system to post and while I did throw the towel for the time being, I went on Brazilian eBay and got some capacitors. Now I have never tried to recap anything, but I decided it was time. And the original caps on the motherboard looked pretty disgusting. The idea seemed simple and the video project was promising. So, removing these capacitors was supposed to be easy as I saw in many instructional videos on YouTube. This is what you're supposed to do. Step 1. We can have lots of fun. No, really. Keep finger pressure on one side of the capacitor. Step 2. Heat the opposite leg of the capacitor under the PCB. Step 3. The solder melts and the leg pops up. Step 4. Do the same for the other side. Guess what? No matter how much pressure or for how long I heated the solder point on the PCB, it doesn't come out. So I started trying different things like using two soldering irons to see if I could generate enough heat to melt the old solder, but this didn't work. It seemed like the thing is not only held by solder, but by pressure from the sides of the tiny hole also. In desperate mode, I was hitting the leg and pulling the capacitor with all of my strength, and what I managed to do was rip the capacitor body off of its legs. So next, I start pulling the leg with a pair of pliers. Through all of the night I fought to get the capacitors out, and then I could just put the other ones in and solder them, right? Right? No. The new capacitor's legs wouldn't go into the tiny holes, so this was another fight. Some I won, and some I only got the thing through partially. So one by one, I felt like I got the hang of it a bit more. At the end, I devised a system for taking them out and putting a new one in. And these were the real steps I figured while doing it. Step 1. Grab the capacitor body with a pair of pliers and rip it apart so only the legs are stuck to the PCB. Step 2. Use a pair of pliers to yank on the leg on one side of the PCB while you push with the tip of the soldering iron as hard as you can on the other side. Step 3. After you remove the old capacitor, get something thin to push through the hole and make it wider. I ruined a pair of nice tweezers to do this, but maybe you can find something else. Step 4. Now you have enough room to stick the new capacitor's legs in. Step 5. Don't be shy with the amount of solder wire you use, and after melting it in place, pull the soldering iron out to make the molten solder look like a raindrop. Hope for the best that your board doesn't have another busted component, and that in this process, you didn't ruin anything else on it. 
I surely thought I did. And in the end, maybe like me, you learn that no matter how many YouTube videos you watch, you really ever learn something by doing it yourself. Although I was very happy to see the motherboard work again after all the work I put into it, I was a bit disappointed with its graphics capabilities. The G4 6100 onboard video card is not fast by any means. As a follow-up, I will do a bit more testing with the system and see if I can make it a bit more useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. I'm going to leave you with my favorite benchmark from the old days and you can come to your own conclusions about this platform.
Thank you.